Good morning and welcome to AMUS 2023, presented by the Sacramento Business It is great to be here. It's especially great for me, because I wasn't here last year. It's the only show I've ever missed in 26 of them. I, and I was uh, pretty much deathly ill, but that's all gone. And uh, it's really nice to be here, see everybody, uh, to uh, you know, really uh, renew old acquaintance and uh, see everybody's smiling faces. It's really great compared to what was happening last year for me at this time. Uh, my name is Brian Deneen. I'm the president of the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club for the last 26 years. And uh, it's uh, something that's... Uh, <laughs> Brian, you don't look that old. I know, I, but I, I'm, I'm certainly more than 26. Uh, and, uh, so it's, it's great to see everybody here. I'd like to thank the people who have made this possible. First of all, the uh, Sacramento Amiga Computer Club members, uh, who are our volunteer staff and who have been uh, hitting this thing hard for the last year. So uh, if you've ever done a show or any sort of gathering, you know what kind of detail that is. Uh, and if you haven't, don't try. It's not, it's not a good thing unless you really want it. Uh, we've been doing it now uh, for 26 years, and uh, this is the 26th at Annie West. Uh, thank you for uh, all of the effort for, from especially Bill, Forsari, and Jerry Gray, Brian Cardinano, and Fred Nelson. Uh, they have been the lead team this year. I have stepped back a step, and they have been the lead team. Uh, so it's really, it's really great to have them here and doing this. Our financial sponsors are always important. Uh, Aeon Technologies in the form of uh, Trevor Dickinson is here and Matthew Lehman is here. Uh, Amiga on the Lake from New York is also sponsoring us financially. Um, and uh, Cloanto Amiga Forever is also sponsoring us with download codes. And then we have our raffle sponsors. Um, now you can see all this on the website, but I, I just really want to mention these people uh, specifically. Rabbit Hole Computing, Amikit XE, Sordon, um, Amiga Store EU, Alinea Computer, and Retronic Design uh, are sponsoring our raffle with prizes uh, and with uh, all kinds of other stuff. So you can see this is really a group community effort, and it's great, great to see everybody here. Uh, yes, exactly. So our, our uh, first, and throughout the day, you know, there will be, uh, uh, Chris Nelson asked me to announce that there are donuts right behind this curtain, uh, and uh, they're two bucks a whack, uh, just to, he's just, he's not making any money on it, he's making, you know, uh, just picked them up and brought them. There's three boxes uh, from Krispy Kreme, by the way. So uh, there's that, and uh, so somebody else asked me to make another announcement, which I cannot recall at this point. Oh, the, the game competition. We have a new prize for the game competition. So, so th this is a custom printed prize that was actually created by Josh Gray, right? Yes, Jerry's son. Uh, and he's done all the work on it. And this is the grand prize, I believe. Yes. Uh, for the game competition, so make sure to report to the game competition table and play your heart out. This is what you're going to win. And there's more. There's more. Oh my. <laughs> the travel A miniature one. I love it. For those of you who play Dungeons and Dragons, this is your, your, your miniature for your, your next campaign. That's great. That's Unless really your great. Friends, let's play with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. What does the text on it say? Um, Amy West, Champ 2023. Yeah. So Amy West, Champ 2023 will win that at the game competition. Fantastic. Uh, the cards. Oh, okay. All right. So we have Amy West cards and the Cloanto uh, Amiga Forever 10 license, free download. The plus version uh, is on the back of that card. And so you can download that for free just because you're here. Uh, yes. Yeah. And so uh, be sure to shake Michael Badalotta's hand. He's here today. 
uh, and uh, has done all that work on Amiga Forever, almost forever. So, so uh, it's it's really great to uh, see all this participation, uh, and it's it's taken uh, you know a lot of people, a lot of time, effort, and energy to get here and do this. So we really appreciate everyone. Um, anything else? Um, Raffle is a little different this year. Uh, do you want the mic? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, to the mic. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Um, the raffle's a little different this year. Um, w one of the things that we were worried about is people winning prizes they couldn't use or what didn't want. So there's a there's a pegboard over there with little baggies hanging from it, and there's a baggie for each prize. So when you buy your your tickets, you can put the the tickets into the prizes that you want to win. So you don't have a big box Amiga, but you've got a 1200, put it in the Pi Storm light for the 1200. Um, you get the idea. The, the, the descriptions are on the pegboards, they're numbered, the baggies are numbered. Should be pretty self-explanatory, but if it's not, come get me, I can show you how it works. <laughs> Fantastic. This is a new feature this year. So it's really great to see all the effort and energy that's gone into that too. So thank you, Jerry, appreciate it very much. So uh, if you have any questions, Chris and Jerry and Bill and where's my other guy? He's not here right now. Uh, Brian, he's at the table. Uh, if you have questions about finances and tables and those sorts of things, these are the guys to contact. They've laid out all, all, the entire show this year. Uh, they've done all the detail work. Uh, and I, I really appreciate you guys doing this. Uh, other things have intervened in my life, which we don't need to talk about. but. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they're there to pick up the ball and carry it. And not only have they come field and made a, a lot of, you know, field long passes that have been completed and a lot of touchdowns made if you're a football fan. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I think our first speaker, uh, and I, I hear rumblings in the speakers. Uh, but I, and I don't know whether we're still exploring that or not. Apparently we are. but. Uh, I'll hold the floor here for a minute. Are we ready for Trevor? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are we ever ready for Trevor? Well, I, I just wanted to, um, can you guys, yeah, you can hear me, okay. Oh yeah, go, go ahead. And... Yeah, yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, thank Brian. Um, this is, he's our movie star this year because he came out of his trailer for the show. But I mean, as you said, Jerry has done Tremendous job of organizing the DevCon. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for that. The show. I mean, Jerry's making it happen. So give him a hug so he does it next year. Lots of love going to Jerry because we don't want him to rage quit or burn out. Chris Nelson is also, as, as Brian's saying, super helpful. We appreciate you jumping into the steering committee and helping us do it. In the beginning, he's like, I don't know how I can help you. And he did all the table graphics and has been extremely helpful getting the uh, exhibitors organized. Um, I don't know how much news we're going to have, but I wanted to jump in and anybody remember Intuition Base, the website for OS4? Yep. So a few folks have resurrected it. So it is now back online. It's taking submissions and updates. Um, George, uh, our buddy George uh, Stachianos, thank you. Um, and a few other folks, uh, Ray and other people are working on it, uh, and they asked for feedback. So go visit the site if you haven't seen it in a while. If you have suggestions for improvements, send them on in, and hopefully we can keep that going and, and uh, have a whole bunch of new hardware to put on there for compatibility with the table or as, as stuff moves forward. Um, there's also a guy here who's not on the show floor, Dan. We kind of crammed him in on, on the table that's listed as Bill, it's me, CD32-1200. Uh, Dan's a game developer. He was at the, the development, uh, the DevCon yesterday. You should go check out his work. Really, really fantastic uh, for the, the classic. I don't know if you've seen it. You gotta go see this. It's beautiful. So, uh, let's hand it off to Trevor. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. Steve. Trevor Dickinson of AEON Technologies. The news and announcements. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's really good to be back. <laughs> Four years ago, I think it was the last Ami West I could come to, and then something happened to the world and I was locked in New Zealand. So it is really good to be back, and uh, uh, tonight I'm going to party. Last night I was more sensible, but tonight's party night, so Steve. Uh, 
I'm going to tell you a story, right? Uh, anyone that knows me, this is the 14th year, I think, that I've uh, sponsored Ami West on behalf of Aeon Technology. Uh, I've visited every show since 2010, apart from three years when I couldn't come because of COVID. Uh, but I present, I produced uh, <laughs> videos for the show, so at least you got to see my ugly face and uh, hear about what I was talking about. However, this year, I'm I want to start with story time, so just bear with me. Go back to 2010, the first uh, Amiga, uh, Amiga for West show, Ami West show that I attended to introduce the Amiga One X1000, the first public showing in the USA. Okay, the first public showing in the USA. Uh, it was a very early version of Amiga OS 4, and it took another two years before the commercial machine was out. By the time the commercial machine was out, but by the time the commercial machine was out, uh, Apple had acquired PA Semi, who produced the special CPU that was in the X1000, and uh, those CPUs cost $500 each. And then when Apple bought PA Semi, they they were picked up. The CPUs were picked up by a, uh, a stock hold, a, a holder in Florida, and the price went up to about thousand dollars. So we made this plan to cr create a new Amiga One computer, uh, and the CPU was a thousand dollars. It was a crazy. We went. We went. We went ahead with it anyway, because we're we're Amigans. We're stupid, right? Uh, but even in 2012, we were thinking. How can we get a replacement for the X1000? We'll make as many X1000s as we can, because we had a big back order. Uh, but how, you know, it wasn't a long-term solution. We thought about, well, let's, let's create a, uh, a replacement using uh, Freescale CPUs, uh, which were from their P-series. Uh, they had 10-year guaranteed life. They looked like we could get them. The prices were still expensive, but not, not as expensive as the, the PA7, the PA Semi CPU. I'll just adjust this a bit, it keeps falling down. Okay, so we thought, well, let's produce a, a replacement board. But we really wanted to create an, a mid-performance entry-level model. And so we thought, well, how about we produce a model we can use multiple CPUs that are pin compatible? Because the P series from Freescale had pin compatibility, we could use a, a mid-level, mid-performance, entry-level model. We could produce a power model, uh, and that's what we went for. We went for a thing called Cyrus. So Cyrus was going to be a, a CPU, a, a, a new Amiga One computer to replace the X1000 when we completely ran out of uh, 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 CPUs. The interesting thing is, we did two or three runs of the X1000. Uh, and the stock, the, the stockpiler contacted us a few years later, wanting to buy back CPUs. So, it, but they're all gone. So it didn't happen. Okay. So we decided to create. We, there was a new uh, Freescale CPU coming out called a P5020, which was a, a, a dual core, 64-bit, running at 2.2 gigahertz, supposedly. And there was a, a P3041, a, again, dual-core, 32-bit CPU running at uh, 1.5 gigahertz. So we thought, there's two models, entry-level, mid-performance, and a power level for Amiga users. Uh, plans never go to plan. Uh, plans, you know, anyone that's been involved in Amiga manufacturing development will know it's a long process. It's slow, and it takes time. Uh, we engaged, Var Varisus was our hardware partner, and they produced the X1000 and did a really good job. So we used them for Cyrus to create a, a Cyrus prototype design. And I think it was in uh, 2013, I probably brought this board along to uh, AmiWest. And this could support the P3041 and the P50, P5020, because they were pin compatible, weren't they? <laughs> However, <laughs> price rises, inevitable feature creep, because Amigans always want more. Uh, the, the scalable design, the, the Varus has had lots of problems with the pin compatibility, believe it or not. And they recommended, look, after 
years development work and cost, they recommended, well, let's go for a full-size ATX to replace the X X1000. And at the same time, Freescale announced the P5040, which was a quad-core CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz, supposedly 64-bit. So we thought, well, we could have entry-level power, superpower. Sounded good to me. All Amigans want the superpower, don't they? Well, at least I did, anyway. Okay. Uh, we put it out to community vote for the names for the, the new machines, and Amiga 1 X5000 20, Amiga 1 X5040, and the uh, X3500 for the P3041 version. So that's what we chose. We're going to do three machines, same motherboard, different CPUs. There were some other changes to the, th the uh, 3500 because of uh, the CPU, but it was supposed to be a lot less expensive. Supposed to be. So we signed a contract for 500 Cyrus motherboards. And it was going to be cheaper than the X1000. Cheaper, less expensive. I shouldn't say cheaper, it would be less expensive. Because the X1000 uh, motherboard was about a... Th in sterling was about a thousand pounds <laughs> and this is going to be about 850 pounds so we thought well there's a big benefit and so in 2014 the Cirrus Plus Cyrus Plus motherboard prototype was produced and there it is in all its glory now I'd learned a lesson <laughs> with the X1000 because the way we we uh, built the program, there was a payment half up front, and then the remainder on delivery. It wasn't quite like that, but it was sort of like that. But a lot of people paid, but when it came to delivery, you had uh, a number of people saying, well, actually, I can my money back. Well, you know, when you've, <laughs> you're running on very tight shoe rings, <laughs> it's not a good idea. So I said, okay, with the X5000, if you want your name on the motherboard as a beta tester, you can't have your money back. It worked. Because <laughs> a couple of people did come back to me and said, can we have money back? No, sorry, your name's on the board. But I did do a deal with, I, 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 I tried to work a deal out with them, but it did actually prevent the, the problem of, you know, someone saying, you don't have 10 people want their money back, that's quite a bit of money. And also on the board was uh, J Minor and Mitchy, the names of J Minor and Mitchy. That's okay. Yep, you can go on now. Ah, let's lay plans again. The, <laughs> the CPU prices start going up and up and up. Uh, and we, we hadn't prepaid for CPUs. We, we had 50 that went into a beta test program. They're leaving 300, 450, which would be for commercial use. Uh, we decided that uh, 350 would be the X5020 and the balance of 100 will be the mix of 3041s and the P5040s. P5040s weren't out. The P5020s really weren't out either. They were early versions of them. Uh, Freescale reduced the speed of the CPUs they released anyway. So the 5020 was dropped to 2 megahertz and the 5040 was dropped to 2.2. So we, we dropped the, we dropped the uh, 3500 because the price of the... <laughs> 3041 was not so different from the P5020. So it, these things happen all the time, I guess. Uh, but we, wanted to, we still wanted to find a way of creating that lower cost, mid-performance entry level. And so uh, Varus has suggested, having reviewed all the CPUs that are available, PowerPC, that maybe the, uh, the P1022, running at 1.2 gigahertz, dual core, with a special SPE FPU would be, they could make something that they thought they could make for about a third of the price of the uh, Cyrus. So we paid some more money. It was all money out at this stage, right? All money out. Uh, we signed a contract for a thousand motherboards, which got the price down. And we prepaid for all the CPUs because we were really concerned about just rising CPU prices. And the board, name, all of our boards have a reference to uh, Jules Verne, the Mysterious Island novel. So uh, uh, they have a, a name, so this was Tabor, 
tables uh, in the is what well, in the book. Uh, the X1000 is Nemo, Captain Nemo, and the, uh, the Cyrus one, just for information, is <laughs> Cyrus. <laughs> okay. So we produce four boards for bring up and test. And there's the pro prototype table board produced in March 2014. You probably think, 2014? It's 2023, for goodness sake. Okay, well, you know, best laid plans. Next one. So, we decided to produce 50 motherboards for the beta test program. The first 10 boards went to developers and, and Hyperion Entertainment to port OS 4. Now, that's September 2014, right? Uh, however, we created a Debian Linux port to uh, test all the onboard components to make sure there are no hardware surprises. And I have to say that the, uh, a, a part with the X1000 and the X5000, there were multiple motherboards produced. With Tabor, it was very good. The, the, second, the second run produced a really good board with very, very little issues. Uh, the, the name for this new Amiga 1 computer was going to be the A1222. It had the P1022 CPU, so we used the 22. And Matthew Lehman's favorite computer, Amiga, as a kid, was an Amiga 1200. Put both together, he chose the name, so blame him, right? Uh, we announced the beta test program at AmiOS 2015, eight years ago. So the time starts to stretch. Uh, we donated two boards to the uh, John uh, Adrian Globitz, I presume it's Globitz, who uh, ran the special SP build program for Debian. And th for a number of years, they ran 24-7, just creating Debian SPE packages. And there's the first version 1.1, Rev 1.1, Do you want to give me a... Is it in? Pardon us while you resolve these technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah they're, I mean, these are junk. It doesn't even, like, clip in properly. Okay. So, I'd put it... Uh, yeah, this is a good side, but... Okay, watch I'll put it. my pocket, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Is it... So there we are. It's the, the, f the first commercial beta test board. Uh, we put a... All our boards have a B-52 song title on following the Commodore tradition, and this one was Topaz. I loved it because Topaz, it's a mega font, and Topaz is a B-52 song title. So for me, it was a double win. Fortunately, we have a, a very dedicated, active uh, core Linux support team who work nonstop. They're like machines. And uh, Christian Zagotsky quickly had a Debian PowerPC uh, the SPV version running on the A1222. This one's actually running EU, EUAE and Amiga OS 3.9. They're, you know, art. <laughs> what is it? Reality, in, 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 art imitation, reality, imitation, art? I don't know. You can make it up for yourself. But there you are. <laughs> There's a, a classic Amiga emulated under Linux on the A1222. And it runs very well. You know? Now... You see the date? November 2016. So September 2014. Now it's November 2016. And the first alpha ISO for OS 4 was produced. Uh, and a developer pre-release version for, uh, of the ISO was uh, produced in the following January. So uh, during this period, there were some issues with Hyperion, you might remember. Um, bankruptcies that weren't bankruptcies and there were lots of uh, things going on behind the scenes uh, so the evolution of OS 4 for the A1222 was very slow as was the evolution of OS 4 for the X5000 uh, over this period you know because of the special SPE FPU uh, I commissioned uh, the 
well, one of the, one of the core uh, OS4 developers, Thomas Frieden, to create a load time emulator to, uh, to improve performance when FPU commands were used. And generally it's worked out okay. Uh, onboard Ethernet with the X1000, we got all the drivers apart from the onboard Ethernet, and we used, we used an Ethernet card. Uh, we had a driver, but it was never ever uh, reliable. Worked really well under Linux, but under OS4, it was never reliable. So we were keen that this, this board would have all the drivers ready when we launched. So it has onboard Ethernet. The original driver was developed by Rennie Olson, uh, an OS4 developer. And later, Jamie Kruger also developed an OS4 driver, uh, which uh, he supplied, or was supplied eventually to Hyperion. The U-Boot firmware was updated originally by Mark Olson and has since been further updated by this good man here, Stephen Soley. Uh, the AH, AHI audio driver took quite a while, worked on by Lyle Hazelwood and others, with assistance from people like Steve and others, and, and that uh, is up and running now and, and generally works okay. Yeah. So there, there is actually probably about 2018, uh, an A1222 running uh, uh, a full HD video with DV player, with Sysmon running, and it, you know, generally working pretty well. So, uh, if you don't know the story of Aeon, and you haven't followed my blogs over the years, uh, because we couldn't sell uh, X5000s, Cyrus boards. We had a mountain growing up in our warehouse, which had to be paid for, because they were coming in monthly, 20 boards a month. And you can see, even by 2017, we still hadn't got an OS, an Amiga OS, because that's what it was designed for, on the X5000. So we couldn't sell commercial systems. Same went for the A1222. We had, a tower, we had about 400 board, motherboards in a room, and I could see a thousand table boards coming in well, which also had to be paid for. Fortunately, we were able to renegotiate with uh, Varisys. They'd been acquired by a big defense contractor called Ultra. Company was changed to Ultra Varisys. They didn't really, although they helped us out for a year or two, they did, the parent company didn't understand Amigas. That's a surprise, I suppose, if you're making uh, <laughs> military equipment, as Amigas not really in their, their, their field we managed to negotiate a contract where we took over the license for manufacturing in-house. So we worked on a, a, a new design because obviously by this time, 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, still no really good OS4 ISO still. Adequate, but not good enough for commercial use. Uh, we were able to take over the contract. And a few of the components had gone obsolete. Surprise, surprise. So we, we had to re, re, re evaluate the design, make sure we got all the components available, and version 1.3 motherboard was, was evolved with the help of Acube. They became our hardware partners and they tr tracked down uh, suppliers, manufacturers, and it was a really good relationship. We announced an early adopter run at the end of 2019 to build 110 boards. We offered uh, early adopter packs. You could buy a pack, get a whole bunch of stuff. Matthew hates taking advance payments. He likes to actually provide something. So the early adopter packs were, were a fully featured pack. You could buy it, and that would give you a right to be a first refusal on the new boards when they came out. And then, we all know what happened then. COVID hit. Uh, and. When COVID hit, everything, the world changed overnight almost. Supplies stopped, you know, communication stopped. You, you all know the story. We don't have to go over it. Uh, someone uh, on the forum said, I invented COVID to stop delivering the uh, A1222, which I thought was quite good. You know, it wasn't at a lab in Wuhan. It wasn't manufactured. It wasn't from the, the market. It was from Aeon because they didn't want to produce the A1222. That's the ultimate conspiracy theory, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, however, having said that, we managed to get, uh, uh, AQ managed to get, a, 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 it was really difficult to get in manufacturers. No one wanted to touch small volume manufacturing. And by small volume, I mean a thousand. 
you know, we're talking about 110, you couldn't even get 1,000. So uh, fortunately, uh, Acube were able to, uh, a company called Mass Electronica in Italy, they produced uh, two version 1.3 motherboards. There it is, there's the first one. And it uh, surprisingly worked. <laughs> it was really, p I was really pleased. And it was on the eve of AmiWest 2021 that uh, I saw the first OS4 running on the 1.3 motherboard. The Tabor name be dropped, so don't call it Tabor anymore. Sorry, it's the A1222 Plus. Why is it a plus? Because it's got a few extra things on the board uh, from, from manufacturing. So. But the, the fallout from uh, COVID-19, uh, and anyone that's involved in manufacturing uh, knows this, uh, led to worldwide component shortages, manufacturing costs skyrocketing for small volume manufacturing, 300% increase. One component on the board, a little component, which cost $6.83, was offered for sale at $420. Or you could wait a year. So against this backdrop of trying to find a way of manufacturing, it was really difficult. And, and I'm really pleased that uh, A-Cube, Matthew, uh, worked together to try and find the component parts to actually build the boards. We created a three-way collaboration. It was A-Cube, Aon, and a company called AAA Technology. You've probably heard, heard me talk about AAA Amiga Fun. I think Paul had some of that this morning. I'm looking at him. He's had some AAA Amiga Fun last night, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, AAA Technology is a joint venture between Amedia France, uh, Aon, and Amiga Kid. And we put this in place for two reasons. One, Brexit. <laughs> Brits can't sell to Europe anymore, or well, they get hammered. <laughs> They didn't like us leaving, I think. Sorry. Uh, and uh, we also wanted so a way to sell into Europe, but also we wanted someone as a distributor for our products. So uh, AAA Technology is a distributor for Aeon's products. There's not three companies all taking a piece of the action. It's just one company, AAA Technology. Not, there's, not that the action is very big, to be honest. But. Uh, missing components are tracked down. We placed an order for 110 boards, and I'm pleased to say, two days ago, I've paid for the whole lot, so it's been paid for, so, and it's been finished. <laughs> the boards are finished. We do have the boards, right? Not in my hands, but the boards are finished and paid for. So anyone that says it's vaporware, and I'm still seeing that on the, on the web even now, well, proof of the pudding's in the eating, there we are, it's paid for. And uh, not only that, AAA Technology has uh, secured licenses from uh, Hyperion. They are full price licenses, not the cheap ones you see for sale online. If you make a new computer, uh, Hyperion charge a full license. They're not the, the replacement licenses. So this is a picture given to me two days ago, or three days ago of DV player, multiple, multiple versions of DV player, and shaded, shaded Joy running on the A1222 in, uh, at AAA Technology. And that's just a screenshot of the boot screen. What's even better, we have a really good release team that are working together. I call it a release team, but they're, really they're all volunteers. Steve's uh, team lead. Steve was the team lead for the X1000. The X5000 and the silly fella decided to agree to do again for the A1222. So thank you, Steve. I really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Tony Wyatt, who's produced a few ISOs over the years for the uh, A1222. There's never really been an official ISO, has there? Really. Uh, but they work, they're working together with Alexandre and Matthias uh, in testing an ISO. That's really good. Frank and Lauren from a AAA Technology, they're also testing, but they're the distributors. I'm, uh, special thanks for LD Stevens, who's been a champion for the A1222. He's written some excellent articles. He's got a fantastic wiki up on the A1222. And, and, he'll, and he's, if you want to see one running, he's, he's got it on his it's a tiny little box on his desk. So thanks, LD. And he, he continues to prompt and support developers to, to help get games, programs running on the A1222. 
And of course, me, because I funded it. <laughs> I wasn't going to put that on because I think it's, I don't like self promotion, but I thought, sod it. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to. There you go. You deserve it. Thank you. But, and this is a photograph I took at Imiga, Germany. <laughs> and that's a new game, Hurricane, created by, uh, ported by Who Knew Power PC, running on the A12U2. And I just saw this little kid running it, and I thought, not only is he better than me, because I couldn't do it, he was doing really well. But it was just good to see that, you know, there was the A1222 version 1.3 running a, you know, a, a, a Power PC Amiga game. I thought it was great to see. But of course, the Aeon's not just about the uh, A1222. Uh, and I've, I've, I've made comments about the Amiga 1 X, X, X5000. Uh, the, the, the X5000 20 version is fully sold out. All we have left now is X5040 versions, and we have more than we originally ordered because, uh, fortunately, Paris has made a mistake and ordered too many 5040 versions, and they got put in, so we got those, so that's great. So we've got 5040s. It's the uh, quad-core, 2.2 gigahertz, 64-bit CPU, running OS4 at 2.2 megahertz. It's a really nice machine, although I have to admit, I haven't been involved in the X1000. When I got my X5000, I hated it first. I can say that you know, uh, because it didn't run. <laughs> it, my X1000 was solid, stable, really good. My X5000 was glitchy, had problems. I'm talking about 2015, 16. We didn't really get a, uh, an, a working ISO till probably end of 2017 that really ran well. So there we are. Uh, if you want an expensive, high-powered, Mega One computer for next generation, this is the one for you. If you want to taste what uh, uh, OS 4 feels like on a, a fairly powerful uh, PC, then the A1222 might be the one for you. So complete systems are available from AAA Technology with a full OS 4.1 license, which again is not the cheap license you see on shore. Yeah, what have I got? Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Tha well, yes, I was dr I know, I know, I know. Well, thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. When I wrote that, it was after some whiskey. <laughs> so it's, it's complete with the Enhancer version 2. Now, I ran this past Matthew, so if I didn't notice and he didn't notice it, so, yeah. It's fully, now, you might not like to hear this, but it's fully supported by the latest Morph OS 3.18. Runs really well. In fact, you can run OS4 and more OS together now uh, with it using a, 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 an extender cable from the Times 4 slot. You can put a Times 16 graphics card on. You can, have, you can boot to OS4 or you can boot to more OS. Your choice. Or Linux, even. Uh, all of our boards are supported, well, the X5000, X1000, are supported by the, supports the mainstream Linux kernel, thanks to our crazy core Linux developers, they make sure they're all supported. Uh, and it also runs Casey Cullen's, lots of PowerPC versions, to be honest, but Casey Cullen's Phoenix Linux 6.01, it runs it really well, it's like out of the box, you can put it out of the box, everything works out of the box, it's really nice, I like that one. And just to prove it, we can see OS 4.1 with the latest enhancer, Morpho OS 3.18, and Phoenix. I, I created this image about uh, just before I left New Zealand a couple of weeks back on my machine just to show it's all running. It's really good. We've got a new version of Enhancer coming out. It's, it's bug fixes, a few util utilities, maybe a few surprises. Depends how, uh, depends how generous uh, Matthew's feeling. But that'll be out before Christmas. So if you're an Enhancer customer, that's a free upgrade. Okay. It's also compatible with the A1222. A little diversion. Uh, we were talking with uh, Hans de Reuter. Hans is, uh, does all of our contract uh, graphics work, drivers, accelerators, you name it. And we thought there's a real interest in emulation uh, and people working on emulation of the 
the OS4 for the Pegasus running under QMU. Now, I have to ask LD. We had a discussion. Is it QMU or QEMU? You don't mind, okay. Is it Core IQ or Corig? Thank you. <laughs> uh, so th Hans has developed, he's working on a driver for us that looks like it will make uh, for, for QEMU and KVMs, which will look like a regular PCI device, a graphics driver. It passes all the graphics commands through the host operating system's graphics drivers. It provides 32-bit display support. It's high resolution. Uh, it's pretty fast. And uh, Vert, Vert IO has 3D video decoding hardware. That's work in prosa still, but it's still working good. There's a screen mode 2048 by 1152, 24-bit. It's Pegasus running under, under a, on a PC. <laughs> uh, there's emulation, uh, a QMU. Pegasus 2 running OS 4.1. And there's the display bridge shown, the uh, PCI display controller is shown there. Running in Ranger. <laughs> if you don't know, Steve's the developer of Ranger. There's uh, Odyssey web browser running on it. Same thing, uh, running under QMU emulation. What does that mean? Well, it means we've got a fully working frame buffer driver, 8, 16, and 32 bit screen modes. We've got a hardware accelerator mouse pointer, monitor, it automatically detects monitors. It's high resolution, it's fast, no need to uh, emulate hardware registers. Uh, we ha we're working on uh, decoding hardware acceleration, so that's 3D video. Version 5.5 has just been released, and it's very usable as is. So we'll probably be asking for some beta testers to, who want to help with this program. But at the moment, it's been done in-house. Yeah? Good. Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> but what's interesting, there's future potential for this, because the revert I.O. library could be used for more drivers, network, SCSI, and others. It may allow OS 4.1 to run natively in KVM using the host OS drivers. Uh, it would enable OS 4 to run on hardware for which there are no drivers from within a virtual machine. It's never going to be as good as you know, a bespoke X5000, the like, but it will give you a much better Amiga OS 4 experience. Now, this is a, <laughs> a shameless plug for the Vultures to Vampires. Anyone knows me uh, knows I write a lot of uh, articles for Amiga Future magazine. Uh, I think uh, the Classic Reflection series, the Amiga Retrospective series. Uh, when David Pleasance, the former, Commodore, the former CEO, managing director of Commodore UK, he wrote a book about his time at Commodore uh, with contributions from other people who had a close link to Commodore. When he decided that he was going to write another book about what happened to the Amiga and Commodore technology after Commodore went bankrupt, he said, I said, do you know anything about it? And he said, no. <laughs> I said, well, how are you going to write it? I'll get other people to contribute. I said, well, look, I've written a lot of articles. I'm willing to give them all to you. You can have them all. It's a good basis for a start. So a month, I sent them to him. A month later, he called me. It's very complicated. <laughs> I said, tell me about it, tell me about it. So he agreed that uh, we worked together. Uh, fortunately, he let me write the books, so if you don't like them, it's, he did it. But he, I wrote the books, he did all the admin, so I could concentrate on the fun stuff. He had to concentrate on the, the admin, really awful stuff. I'm pleased to say that all three books are now out. Steve's got three copies on his desk, one, two, three. I've donated volume one for the raffle, so if you haven't read it and you want raffle, it's volume one's there. Volume 2 was released at Amiga Germany. That's the, volume 3 was released at Amiga Germany. And then I bought a copy for Steve since Steve helped me out. It tells the story of what happened to the Commodore and Amiga technology, all the highs, the lows, the people who tried and failed but tried. 
the inevitable legal issues, but it tries to t be po totally honest. Uh, as I wrote it, obviously, it's biased a little bit towards me because I wrote it. Uh, but uh, uh, what I mean by that is you'll find uh, comments from me throughout the book. But what I've managed to do is to get input from lots of other people who've, released, who've re revealed some really interesting information that's never been revealed before in the Amiga world. And we've got Gary Hare, who was our banquet speaker tonight, and he, he contributed to uh, some really interesting stuff in the book. I'm saying no more. Gary can reveal it tonight. It'll be fun. Well, it'll be interesting. I don't know if it's fun, but it'll be interesting. <laughs> uh, but I must... I want to thank, for the book, I want to thank Dave Haney, who I used as our, my technical sounding board. Anytime I was a bit confused or I thought maybe there was some other you know, way to explain things, Dave would help out. That was good. Uh, Gary Hare, who revealed the previously untold dark secrets of the shell game of Amiga Inc. Uh, Eugene Van Oost the CEO of Commodore Corporation, uh, Commodore Corporation BV, who actually owned the Commodore copyrights. All of them, despite what you may hear elsewhere, that they own them, right? Uh, and he, he helped me understand the even more convoluted uh, Commodore IP trail. And if you haven't followed that, it is a real mess. And finally, I've got to thank the makers. I know someone doesn't like makers, but the makers, the enthusiasts, the engineers, the developers, the beta testers, the com Amiga community have kept this damn thing alive for all these years. Thank you. <laughs> because you're, without you, us, we, we would not be here today. So that's the end of my presentation. Thanks. Okay. Any time for questions, Bill, I just want to move on. Kevin. Uh, because we have a bunch of people from all over the world looking, watching, when can people start to buy 1222 systems? Well, the distributor is AAA Technology in Luxembourg. Uh, the boards are finished. There was one small change to add to the board. They're finished, it's been paid for. I imagine uh, once that's finished, they'll be sent for bring up or whatever they do. I don't understand these things. And, and then they'll, be, they'll go to uh, uh, AAA technology. They, they are now accepting, you know, uh, they're now accepting orders, so. Uh, one more, yeah, Len. 110. It, it was a trial run, 110. Uh, uh, yeah, it's right. Mic off again. Yeah, it's a trial run, 110. And, you know, supply and demand. If there's demand, there'll be a supply. So it's a start. Uh, for me, can I be honest? I just wanted the... I was going to swear again. I just want the thing out, right? I wanted it finished. There's been so much time, effort, and money, and angst invested in this board. I wanted it out. I wanted to say, look, Yabu sucks. You're all wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but yes, I am. <laughs> no, but I, w I really wanted it out. I just, I just thought we needed it out. Let's get it out there. And then we look, what do we do next? And that really comes down to the community and the demand and issues. One more question. Are we all finished? Come on, LD, you always ask a question. All right. <laughs> What's the, uh, what is the estimated price from Triple H Technology for a heating system? Well, I, I looked, they've, they've posted that pricing online. I was a little bit, uh, I was a bit confused by it myself. Yeah, uh, because really it's going to be at the same sort of price as a, as, as a, a Cube SAM 460 in terms of the board. Uh, it is supplied with the full OS4 license and it's supplied with a full uh, enhancer license. So they're built in, so that's the board price. Uh, if they put systems together, I mean, that's their system. The retailer's gonna make some money on putting the system together. Uh, so I don't know, I haven't really 
it's not under my control because I'm, you know, Aon is a, a subsidiary or a partner of that company. They'll decide pricing. I, I think a lot of people will buy the board themselves and they'll get the board, they'll get OS4, full price OS4 license and they'll get an enhancer. It'll also be supplied with a recovery USB stick with everything on it. So you can actually plug it in and recover all your software, drivers, everything. And are orders being accepted now? Yes, right. orders are being accepted now. Thanks very much, Elton. Okay, well that's it. Thanks very much. Um, um, this, <laughs> I can have a good time tonight, so if you come and see me tonight, I can tell you anything else you want to know. Thanks very much. I appreciate it.